Good afternoon, dear friends. Again, we are all gathering together with a discussion on classification of angiosperms. Yesterday, we had really elaboratively studied the Hutchinson system of classification, which was called as a true phylogenetic system of classification. It is called as a true because it was really following what Darwin has proposed as an important component in biological world and that is the struggle for existence and a competition for success and one which is having the survival potential and to achieve this each and every one is supposed to undergo changes, mutations, modifications, alterations. But when we are thinking of this, all these aspects they were taken into consideration. And accordingly, Hutchinson tried to place the angiosperms in a phylogenetic tree. Then Hutchinson proposed a classification system. Up to late 1990s, this task was taken over by either a single taxonomist working together in a society or working together somewhere in an organization or an university. Or two or three people they used to come together. But after Hutchinson, a new trend arrived. And this trend was to refine what has been proposed before. So after Hutchinson, a system was proposed by the Taktajan, the system was proposed by the Cronquist, the system was proposed by the Smith, the system was proposed by the Dalton, Orpe, and many others. And what we're doing was, was a platform, an interface which was prepared by the Hutchinson or many others. They tried to refine it. They tried to modify it. And they used to make some changes. So this the classification systems which are proposed in 20th century, they were uh, in, you can say they were in continuation of what has been proposed once upon a time. And because of that, if you at all you study the phylogenetic systems of classification in 20th century, almost all the systems, they are following the same trend. All have assumed that the Renins is the primitive group. All have assumed that the Diacots are the most primitive. All have assumed that simplicity is the basis, freeness is the basic character, and from them, obviously, the other clads, other trends, they have evolved. Furthermore, they were also accepting that evolution is taking place its own way, own path, independently, and this evolution is taking place not only in all the characters of an organism, but it is taking place as a trend of getting specializations, getting the complications or sophistications in a particular system and the arrangements were met. And so, particularly in 20th century, the approach of the taxonomies, it got changed. And the morphological characters which were exhibited not only at the now species level, but much at a higher hierarchy. It may be genera, or it may be family, or it may be order, it may be clan, or it may be, it may be even uh, upper than that. It, they were trying to correlate this assemblage of characters with the environment. And accordingly, they were trying to justify how the environment was playing an important role. So as this particular clan, or so as this particular train, or so as this particular family has attained these characters. 
in 1960s onwards when a system of classification was proposed by the taktajan then in 1973 by the thorpe there was a tremendous pressure on this taxonomist and the pressure was during this period there was a lot of evolution was going on in the research and this research was going on in multiple dimensions the research was going on in environmental sciences the research was going on in ecological studies that the environment and the changes which are taking place the much more information was gathering up pouring up from the cytological studies several schools all over the world they have taken up the task to identify the genetic material of this genera families orders and obviously their correlation to each other and because of that obviously lot of information was given what lot of stress was also given on studying the biochemistry studying the different parts studying the different uh, frameworks and runways of synthesis of compounds their role and their function and because of that obviously by the end of conquest classification which was proposed it became rather a very difficult task for a taxonomist to consider all these parameters together and propose a system of classification now when we are talking about the phylogeny let's go and overview because this is very essential so which is the overview the overview is this one this was the basis cactus means the base in 1900 he proposed a classification system and to describe the way evolution has taken place he has proposed this cactus form now if the image is not so clear because uh, you cannot read you may not read but let me uh, give you some hints so this is a cactus of a dicotred clade dicotred trend and at the basis you can see the families like jaglaniaceae bichomaceae hydrocaratacee uh, magnoliaceae they have been placed at the base obviously if you go to the right you will find the family verbenaceae the family campanulaceae and the family uh, violaceae they have been placed if you see central stock the family jaglanis is there so it is a strange trend so what it indicated the base tried to forward a statement that a one character once established in a particular group that character is continued in its progeny that character is continued in its next revised or improvised forms and because of that once the character is established in one family the same character may be continued in its genera as well as in species but at the same time when such a character is still showing its existence it may show the modifications it may show the alterations because ultimately this character itself also is following a evolutionary path and because of that you can see basically there are at least 3 to 4 main lines of research a main lines of evolution within the dicots you can see one shoe of shoot on the left side the one central one and then one towards the right side similarly yesterday we have studied that based on this base hutchinson proposed the classification system and when the hutchinson proposed the classification system now you can see that uh, at the base it has been written that hypothetical proangiosperms which are gave rise to dicots in the dicots on the left side you can see the lignose that is woody plants on left or right side you can see the herbaceous group herbaceous forms and then how these groups they are giving rise to the diverse characters of different orders and you can see they are blooming like an evolutionary tree so this is a sort of a evolution which has taken place in a multifaceted way and not only multifaceted way many of the times similar characters may be seen 
similar characters may be seen within one order within one family within one genera but they may be coming but these characters may be coming from the different strains at the primitive level and because of that to understand the phylogeny because of that to understand the developmental progression it is very difficult and when the when this particular hutchinson proposed this system of classification somewhere in 1973 again his system of classification was again totally based on the morphological characters on the cladistic characters cladistic characters means the numerical characters and relationships of the morphological traits of the vegetative and floral components they were not considering what is happening at the physiological level they were not considering what is happening at the biochemical level even they were least bothered about their psychological relationships now you do know well that during this course of time there was a tremendous evolution which was pouring in where now the scientists all over the world they were studying the genera they were studying the species they were studying the orders together to identify the relationship to identify and compare the different components at the genetic level you know well in genetics we are having the ploidy and we are having the mutations that is the evolution is progressing the evolution is forwarding further on two different arms one arm is the morphological arm means what is happening with the chromosomal characters chromosomal numbers and what we know as a ploidy so diploid triploid tetraploid hexaploid octaploid so on so on so on so on so the moment the same genetic set is getting added the characters are getting intensified at the same time it may happen that the chromosome number may go on missing that is 2 plus 1 2 minus 1 4 plus 1 4 minus 1 even the genes which are present on the mitochondria they are also expressing in a different way and so at the same time not only the changes are taking place at the at the chromosomal level but also the changes are taking place in the form of the dna structure structural dna it means that the genes are getting changed the sugars are getting changed the combinations are getting changed and these are called the morphological changes on the other hand of this genetic basis there was another trend that was called as a functioning of this genome sequence means once we are talking about the structure of the chromosome and structure of the dna on other hand we are also involved in understanding how these are interacting with the expression in the terms of morphology so what is happening even the gene is present and if the gene is getting inhibited by some other gene so the gene will not be getting expressed if the gene is present and if the inducer gene is not present it may not be expressed it becomes inactive if the genes are present and if the enzymes are produced but the enzymes are having the inhibitions automatically the enzymes cannot be again expressed because the enzymes will require the substrate and the substrate will require a previous set of exam equivalent equation or reaction and because of that from 1950s onwards the information started pouring in on the basis of environmental relationship and on the basis of psychological relationship extensive work was undertaken by different schools all over the world almost each and every researcher wanted to understand the genetic configuration of each and every species they wanted to understand the genetic configuration of the genera and the species which are present and the correlation among themselves and each and every one was trying to express all these morphological traits morphological characters and the expression of the gene and the expression of the gene of the set of genes in terms of the cladistics cladistics means its expression which is taking place at the morphological level which is taking place at the physiological level 
remember almost by 1990s or before that because the c4 pathway was discovered in 1964 later on almost all the schools all over the world they started studying all the plants which were known to them to understand their mode of photosynthesis so there was another branch and this branch was to categorize all these angiosperms to categorize all these genera and to categorize all these for four lakh species into either ct pathway or c4 pathway and then a question mark was raised how you are going to justify this on the basis of evolution so this was the trend which was proposed by hutchinson similar trend was again provided by the raja now very interestingly you can see the difference between the hutchinson and taktajan in hutchinson the dicots were shown with two major streams woody plants and herbaceous plants whereas in taktajan you can see at the bottom the angiosperms they are having more than six different clans that is six different roots with which the dicots have evolved so this is a clado it's called a cladogram of orders which has been proposed in 1966 by taktajan so taktajan was a russian taxonomist and he showed that the dicotyledons of the angiosperms they have not evolved from a common ancestral stock but the traits the traits are the groups are totally independent they were present right at the beginning and they have evolved independently and that's why he gave the name clades so automatically the angiosperms are not subclassified into orders now but the whole angiospermic group dicotyledony was having an assemblage of different clades clades means strains the different strains together and each strain was having its own primitive ancestor and each one having its own advanced ancestor or advanced member and this particular evolutionary pattern was completely independent autonomous and it was completely free when we were studying about the genetic basis there was a one more branch which added a lot of information and this branch was a developmental biology means this branch was giving us an impetus it was giving us an idea about the structure and function of microspores that is pollen grains structure and function of the egg obviously at the ovary and uh, uh, ovule and egg cell then the mechanism of pollination and embryology you know well that at the beginning the embryological development starts with the zygote but ultimately the nature of embryo the way it is taking place for the endosperm its consumption or retention it is completely a physiological process and because of that all these aspects were also should be taken into consideration there was one more enigma a problem a question mark and the question was was in all the angiosperms irrespective of dicots and monocots broadly speaking by studying their pollen grains they could be classified into two basic categories half of the pollen grains they were monosulcate means they were having a single suture on their wall so the exam was showing a single aperture through which the microtube was supposed to come or the pollen tube was supposed to come whereas the remaining group they were showing the tri sulcate pollen grains that means they were having the tri radiate mark obviously it was assumed that the tri radiate mark must be an indication of tetrasporic development of pollen grains and that's why they should be treated as a primitive ones and that's why there was a lot of confusion because all the pollen plants or all the genera of the angiosperms they can be categorized like a, a physiological role that all the angiosperms they can be categorized into two one 
almost 95% of the angiosperms they are c3 plants and 5% they are c4 plants in this way as far as the pollen morphology is concerned almost more than 70% of the angiosperms they are monosulcate and 30% they are trisulcate and because of that this was a first acceptance by the angiospermic taxonomists that the dicotyledons they are not monophyletic that is they are they are not derived from a single common ancestor but they have evolved from an common ancestor which was similar in some characters of magnolias group and from this group all other characters they have evolved similarly this was the proposal which was made in 1973 by the conquest now you can see the magnolidae which is having the single order at the base you can see the way they have diversified so this is only the clade this is only the cladodiagram or diagram or cladogram of the dicots you can see on there is one side which is called the hamamelidae or hamametidae in the other side there is a carophyllidae which is having the ovary inferior the delaniaceae which is very similar to monocotyledon or two magnolias but the plants are herbaceous so on one side we are having the characters which are very simple where the ovary superior on other side the ovary is inferior and then conquest assumed that there are two independent strains of evolution in dicots and which was shown by the rosidi order and asteridi order so the difference between the two is that in rosidi they are having all the permutation combination of complexity but the only character is that the ovary is inferior oh, sorry uh, in rosidi the ovary is superior whereas in asteridi in all the characters the ovary is are superior so again in a rosidi basically the ovary is inferior see the interest basically in rosidi the ovary is inferior for example in the family myrtaceae family leguminosae campanulaceae many others the ovary is inferior but if you compare the other families the advanced families the ovary is also inferior in same case is in astridi also in genus astridi itself that is in family composite the ovary is inferior but the advanced members they are giving rise to the bicarpellate group and this bicarpellate is having the ovary superior for example the family verbenaceae the family laniaceae acanthaceae scrofulariaceae bignoniaceae and many others all these they are having the ovary superior so within the clan also we can see there is a diversity and evolution so why i'm talking about all this i'm talking about all this is because in 1980s this particular trend the basic structure it was accepted that the dicots are evolved from definitely a common magnolidae ancestor but that was almost more than 100 million years back today the magnolidae which is present today is also much more advanced than the ad previous ancestral magnolidae and this magnolidae today's magnolidae is showing certain advanced characters then the dicots are showing polyphyletic origin that is they are raised independently from different clades and because of that on one side they are herbaceous they are having herbaceous characters on other side they are having the woody characters they are having the position of the ovary and basically this classification is based on the cytological studies and embryological studies also they accepted that particularly at the three levels in monocotyledons the evolution has taken place so the monocots definitely have evolved from a common single ancestor group not a single species from a single group and from this single group the three different at three different levels three different orders or three different forms have evolved and because of that once this was understood then 
in 1990s all taxonomies they came together all over the world and a new trend started what was the new trend the new trend was that not only a single individual but many universities many organizations they came together and they tried to propose a new format of presentation and because of that in 1990s onwards the study of phylogeny of angiosperm flowering plants it was not we can say a mastery or the right of a single person but many person many groups started working together and not only remember that these groups they were having a clash of others but all were working together the european school the american school the asian school the korean school the japanese school the school of the kew botanical garden the school of the oxford university garden and many others they started working jointly together and they started proposing the interrelationship and their trend of evolution and that's why now they started proposing a new format of presentation of evolution among the angiosperms and that's why in 1990s a new trend was named and this name was apg what is the apg stands for it is an angiosperm phylogeny group you remember this angiosperm phylogeny group is nothing but all the taxonomists in the world who are working under a common platform and they are working with a common goal to present the research and to arrange the research in its progressive component or progressive pattern so in 1990s an informal group of botanists from the major institutions of the world that they have been carrying out the analysis of the plant genetic material they came together under the title title angiosperm phylogeny group or apg and they revised whatever was proposed before they revised this and they arranged this not only on the basis of evolution or credentials of the evolution but on the basis of their genetic configuration genetic interrelationship cytological interrelationships and accordingly they started providing the new trend new approach obviously when they started providing this now they felt that it is rather very difficult and artificial to call a living organism as a species or a genera or a order or a family but what they called now that they call that these are the assemblages of common characters together and they called these as a clades so magnolid clad rosidi clad asteridi clad and likewise they started proposing that within the clad the evolution has taken place in a particular pattern particular format and there are also a genetic similarity genetic homogeneity so obviously their intention was to provide a widely accepted and more more stable point of reference for angiosperm classification they were not claiming that this is the only classification but they proposed that this is the way with which the evolution must have taken place at a cytological basis within the genera within the order within the family and that's why we are just giving or describing the strain their first attempt was at a new system was published in 1998 and this they called as a apg system this was very fundamental and basic here what they had done that they have identified the core families 
and they have identified the families which are the groups which are having uncertain origin or uncertain they are trained uncertain ancestry so all the families they were classified into bracketed families or unbracketed families bracket means the ones which were not having any clarity there was a confusion of their ancestry and some were having a very clear cut uh, ancestry and so they sometimes they call as a core groups and others they call as a bracket groups or basal groups now three revisions have been published so far the second revision appeared in 2003 it was a drastic change of what was proposed in 1998 but later on what was proposed in 2003 that is called the apg2 this was really and thoroughly revised a new trend or new classification form was suggested and this was suggested in 2009 that is called the apg3 This is called as the APG three. You can also call it some office number. So remember, APG three is a most you can say refined, most clear a proposal what has been made. Now obviously, one more proposal has come, but which has not been included in our syllabus. And that is two thousand sixteen. That is called the APG four. But obviously, APG four is we are not studying now. Uh, obviously apg4 is also now uh, removing the apg3 now in order to publications of what whatever data was coming together and the way it was presented in the journals eight beginners eight initially researchers they were listed as an authors and these eight researchers they produced three research papers and furthermore more than 33 other researchers from all over the world they contributed they provided additional information in this basic classification system and that's why they were also called as a contributors so the apg classification system cannot be credited to a single taxonomist but it should be credited to a team of the people who are working on angiosperm phylogeny together all over the world and because of that the core angiosperm researchers are eight and the contributors are 20 33 deliberately i have not given the names here now the existing systems the previous systems they they are rejected because they are not phylogenetic that is they are not based on strictly monophyletic groups that is the groups which consist of all descendants from a common ancestor means the way we are talking about the polyphyletic system they are not accepting now they are accepting that the evolution is taking place multifaceted within one group apg show that the monocots form a monophyletic group that is a clan but that dicots do not means dicots have evolved independently in different strains and that's why they use the term not poly but paraphyletic para means because the evolution is taking place at parallel level and they are showing or they are exhibiting the common characters that's why they are called the paraphyletic majority of the dicot species do form a monophyletic group that is majority of the dicot groups they are having many common characters and that's why they are called as the eudicots core dicots or triculpates as i told you because all these eudicots they are having the pollen grains which are having the triridiate mark on their surface on the contrary the remaining dicot species most of the them belonging to a third major clone or clade which is known as a magnolidae and which are having the monoculpate pollen grains so the eucots are grouped together these are more than 70% and 
and remaining is the clad that is the magnolidae which is more primitive one within the dicots the rest include paraphyletic grouping of primitive species known collectively as the basal angiosperms so the basal angiosperms they are providing the basal primitive format of evolutionary trend and from this basic common evolutionary trend the further evolutionary progress has taken place for example several basic families basic angiosperms plus some additional families like ceratophyllaceae and chloranthaceae they have been included in the basal angiosperms the monophyletic refers to a group that consists of a common ancestor plus all the descendants descendants mean the ones the, the way the variations have taken place from that ancestor paraphyletic refers to a group that includes a common ancestor plus some but not all descendants of that common ancestor means in dicots from a common group some basal angiospermic groups evolved and these basal angiospermic groups they further gave rise to the eukaryotes or eudicots the diversity of the angiosperm angiosperm angiospermic flowering plants is not evenly distributed nearly all the species belong to eukaryotes they are almost 75% the monocots because they are totally separate they are 23% and the remaining magnolids that what we know as a primitive group or basal angiosperms they stand only for the 2% and that's why they are not called as a families or they are not called as orders but they are called as a clades the remaining five clades they contain a little over of 250 species only species in total that is less num less than 0.1% of the flowering plants or the plant diversity is divided among nine major families that is if at all we consider the angiosperms almost 90% of the families sorry 90% of the species all are gathered together in nine major families so which are these nine major families these are asteraceae verbenaceae fabaceae liliaceae orchidaceae palmi caryophyllaceae and bignoniaceae so these are the nine families and these nine families they contain almost 95% of the genera and whereas remaining they are carrying out for the remaining 2% as for the principles of the apg are concerned as i rightly said there was again a confusion now how to present these families how to place these families on the paper so one paper of this group is presented showing the interrelationships from their ancestral form and that's why it is rather difficult for a non taxonomist to understand what exactly is to be being proposed and because of that initially the classification was set out as it was given before but later on it was understood that for a common person for a botanist to understand they have to follow the hierarchy which has been forwarded or which has been given by the lineages that is kingdom phylum division class family uh, sorry order family genus and species so this is a hierarchy which has been given by the lineages so each and every paper is presented in two forms one form is giving its own natural cytological trait and the other one its placement in again a linear order linear format and that should be maintained again because of that they are maintaining as it is 
So the lenient system of orders and families should be maintained and retained. The family is central in flowering plant systematics. That is now they are not giving importance to the genus and species because the genus and species they are the variations but they are giving a stress to a common assemblage of natural characters together and this common assemblage of natural characters together which is homogeneous this is now called as a family so now the apg stresses on the family names and not their further classification now they have removed the sub families totally now they have removed the supra families totally now they have removed the genera and the sub genera totally and that's why the families are considered as the main domain of their particular natural trait so this particular group again it may be monophyletic that is it is consisting of all the descendants that are coming from a common ancestor or the main reason why the existing systems are rejected because they do not have this particular property that is they are not considered a common ancestry and because of that the previous classification system they were rejected that is they have not given a treatment of phylo phylogenetic system of classification for the dicots and monocots the family is containing only one genus and order containing only one single family are they are avoided because wherever possible without violating the overriding they have tried to fit such a type of genera that is monophyletic genera or monogenetic families to their nearest clans nearest to groups so obviously the formal scientific names and ranks that are not used above the level of order they were named as the clans instead of other way thus the eukaryotes and monocots that is eukots and monocots are not given a formal rank as per the linear classification on the grounds that it does not get clear at which level they should be recognized because it is not on the path of the evolution the number of families in apg was 262 and it recognized almost 40 orders compared to almost 232 families by the takpajan in 1990 1973 classification that is wrongly written a substantial number of taxa whose classification had traditionally been uncertain that given places both they are still contain remain in 25 families of the uncertain position that is in bracketed families so today in apg 3 alternative bracketed classification are provided for the some groups in which a number of families can either be regarded as a separate or can be merged into a single larger family so the sub family was again grouped together in a bracket form for example the humarius humarius family can either be treated as a separate family or it may be treated as a part of papaveraceae because it is belonging to papaveraceae by natural common character and domain a major outcome of the family classification is the disappearance of the traditional division of flowering plants into two groups monocots and dicots so such a trend is not there such a distinctness is not there because they cannot be called as a monocot and dicot because they are showing a parallel relationship and closeness together the number of monocots are recognized as a clade but the dicots are not with number of former dicots being replaced in a separate group basal to both monocots and remaining dicots that is called as a u dicots or true dicots so this was the outline of classification we are uh, earlier i mentioned the angiosperms monocots commulet these are the traits so rosides and asteroids now what has been proposed in apg3 the third paper 
from the APG updates the system described in 2003 paper. Remember, this was not written by one author, but this was written by almost more than nine authors. The broad outline of the system remains almost unchanged, but the number of previously unplaced families, that is, bracketed families, and the genera, genera, they are significantly reduced. It means that in APG one, there were total 464, oh, sorry, 62 families were present. However, in this case, this number is reduced to 413. So almost 50 families and 50 uncertain positions they have been removed in APG three. So APG three. System recognizes all the 45 orders of the previous system because they are showing the natural trait, as well as 14 new ones. The number of orders goes up to 45 to 59. Only 10 families that are not placed in an order because they are not showing a common assemblage of characters, and only two out of these two, that is, upper decantacy. And Sinomoriasi are left entirely outside, so it has been assumed that these two families or these two distinct genera, because they are monogenic, are totally different than angiosperms. They cannot be called as a member of angiosperms because they are showing certain characters which cannot be fitted in the definition of the angiosperms. So obviously, within angiosperms also. We are seeing an evolution. On one hand, we are having the most primitive angiosperms, which are not existing today. Then, excuse me, uh, one minute, just hold on. I'm getting an urgent call from uh, Delhi. Please hold on. Hello. Huh. 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 Oh. Okay. ठीक है. Okay. Okay. Huh.
हेलो हेलो सर सो योर वॉइस इज नॉट कमिंग Yes. Okay, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. I will continue. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is it clear now? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, uh, I had we people have not left. We have not left anything. We were up to this level. Yes. Uh, that uh, we are having the four and fifteen families in the APG uh, three. and many of the families they have been the bracketed families or the families which were placed at the uncertain position or they have been removed now this is a simplified form of apg now here you have to see from the obviously right side see on the right side in the red color it is written that triculpate pollen grains and monosalicate pollen grains so triculpate pollen grains they obviously belong to the core u dicots that is they belong to the dicot group whereas the monosalicate pollen grains which are containing a single suture they belong to the basal dicots now you see in this apg classification system no pair you will find a separation as dicot and monocot means all the angiosperms they are treated as an independent group of flowering plants so if you see it has been assumed that i will talk from the bottom now amborelaceae family is considered as the most primitive family even though this group is included and involved in the renales it is very close to the magnolidae but within magnolidae also the amborelaceae group is considered as the most primitive one about that the anita grade is the separate grade which has been identified which is showing a genetically basic genetically simple group of angiosperms and it has been identified and therefore it has been placed separately so above that you will identify the magnolia su group a free group and above this you will identify the monocots have been placed it means the monocots are nothing but these are showing a floral variation than a common character of angiosperms now what is the common character of angiosperms these are the plants with the vessels they are having the xylem with the xylem vessels they are having the phloem with the companion cells they are having a typical eight celled embryo they are having a presence of pollen grains they are having a double fertilization and they are having a triploid embryo so all these characters are present in all this group and that's why monocots have not been separated now you can see their ancestry and their correlation together so obviously according to the apg classification the rosidae group at the top and the astrids group these two groups are the most advanced groups of angiosperms there's amborelae and magnolidae they are the most primitive groups or most simplified ancestral stocks it is not as a group it is a stock a clan among the angiosperms now this is the way so this is the image i can provide i am going to provide this image on your uh, separately notebook so this is the image which is showing their cytological correlation so all these families they are showing their cytological correlation and you can see at the top we are having a common ancestry is <coughs> a common clade which is giving rise to the diversification of angiosperms so this is the presentation of genetic configuration genetic diversity in apg3 and this is the one this is the work 
which has been done by the APG group. In short, you can see exactly now it has been placed in a reverse way. Mahachi ji, image with the multi kun lavli idhar bhi mudna. So here you can see the early angiosperms at the top, which are having the amborels, nymphials, astrobilials, magnolials, and chloranthales. Now these are the early angiosperms, and within the early angiosperms, again we have placed the monocots. So monocots also they are having the general train of primitive characters, like alismatels. Then we are coming to the next group. And that's why this is called as early diverging U dicots. Means these groups were early evolved, and most of these groups they are present in the Reynolds group. Most of these groups they are Reynolds group, and from this Reynolds group, two groups again separately evolved independently, and one group is Rosids, and another group is Astrids. That is super Rosids and super Astrids. So this is a trend of evolution. Which has been accepted now worldwide, and accordingly it has been presented, and accordingly it has been arranged. So all the phylogenetic systems of classification, all the scientists are working on these lines now. The traditional method of separation of angiosperms into dicots and monocots, the days are gone. Now they are thinking of basal angiosperms, they are thinking of core angiosperms, and they are thinking of the primitive ancestral cytological homology. And they are showing the cytological heterogeneity, which is displayed in rosids and asterids. So this is a classification which has been presented in different orders. Now this is the form. Again, I am going to because the same way I have discussed now. Uh, this is a sort of a relationship again in a short form, which I have presented. So. The two parasitic families, formerly of uncertain position, are now placed, which I already have discussed. And then let us come to the last point: application of APG. The APG publications are increasingly regarded. So on this basis, APG basis, they are increasingly regarded as an authentic point or authoritative point of reference. So the previous references not are accepted now. A significant number of major herbaria, including Q, Edinburgh, America, Japan, and Europe, they are changing their order of their collection or amendment of herbaria in accordance with the APG. So not as per the families, but as per this APG classification: the basal angiosperms, U and U dicots, core dicots, and rosidae and asteridae. The influential world checklist of selected plant families, also from the Q, is being updated now as per the APG three system. That is, the whole world in 21st century now has accepted this APG format. In USA, a recent photographic survey of the plants of USA and Canada is arranged and organized according to APG two system classification. In UK, the latest edition of the standard flora of British Isles is based on the APG three system. That is, now each and every botanical organization, botanical uh, university, and botanical research is being arranged as per now this pattern. Very interestingly, in 19, uh, 2016 onwards, the flora of Nepal project. Has begun, and this also is being arranged and being scheduled as per the APG system of classification. So, we started our journey from the three of Estes, who identified the identified the plants on the basis of their habit, whether they are herbs or shrubs or trees. And from that journey, then we came to the lineages. Linnaeus was followed by the Bentham and Hooker. Yesterday we.
Today we have discussed about the APG system that is angiosperm phylogenetic group where it has now accept, been accepted that to classify the angiosperms is not a task of one man. It is not task of two men because we are having more than 5 lakh species today. We are having a diverse genome data today and so because of that all the schools they have come together and in a unified form they are working out to provide a standard format of understanding the progressive evolution in angiosperms. So this is all about the classification of angiosperms. I am going to provide you the notes. I am going to provide you this PPT presentation also. Most of the issues which we have discussed during my presentation, it has been recorded. It may be made available to you through your YouTube channel. And I feel that the data which will be provided to you, go through it again and again and prepare your own notes. Don't totally relate on what I have said, what the notes say or what the PPT says. Read the books. A lot of information is available online now. A database is available online now. So read as much as possible. Even you may get some books also for study again and accordingly prepare on your own notes on these issues. So with this concluding remark, now we'll stop for the present and from tomorrow onwards, I don't know exactly how to discuss this issue with the battle map, from tomorrow onwards, again at the same time, we'll be going ahead with the next chapter where we are supposed to study some of the representative families based on certain systematic parameters. So if at all you are happy, if you are understood, if there is any confusion, I feel that we should stop now. If at all there are any queries, any misunderstandings, if at all you want to know something new, now I am opening up the chat box. If at all you are happy or if you at all you, there are queries, write down in the chat box or otherwise just record your presence in the chat box.